Hi, I'm Hunter Allen with your Thursday tip. This is a topic that I get all the time. Every day I get an email from somebody. Uh, we get asked this question at seminars, at camps. What's the best power meter for me? Which power meter should I buy? And it's a really complicated topic because there is no such thing as the perfect power meter, right? There are pluses and minuses to each of these things. Now, the first thing that you need to make a decision on is how much do I have to spend, okay? What's my budget? Because that might eliminate some power meters right away if you don't have the budget to spend what those cost. So look at your budget, number one. Number two, look at where you want to measure power. Do you want to measure it at the crank? Do you want to measure it at the wheel? Do you want to measure it in the pedals? Those are the key things there, all right? Start to think about it from, well, what about pedals? Well, if you like your speed play pedals and you don't want to change pedals, then probably a pedal-based power meter is not the right choice for you. So it eliminates those immediately. You need to start looking in other places. A wheel is a great place to do it. Uh, power Tap makes great wheels, and they are really robust and work really well. And they're super simple. But again, if, if you've got lots of different types of wheels, then you've got to buy a power meter wheel for each one of those different disciplines uh, that you may be doing in cycling. So that may not be the best option for you. Now, if you start to look at crank-based ones, there's a lots of different options in crank-based ones. The next question you have to ask is, do I want left and right power? Left and right, which one, do I want to see both of those things? Because if you do, that puts you in a different category altogether. Now I need to say, okay, which are the crank-based ones that I want to, that show me true left and right? There are a couple out there that don't actually show true left and right. They're pseudo power balance. The power to max, the quark, and the SRM can show that, but it's not true. They're only measuring the positive phase of the pedal stroke, and that's really all they're measuring on one side and you know, using some math to look at the other side. So it's not really a true left and right power meter, a bilateral power meter. So do I want to measure left and right? That puts you in that category. Now you're looking at crank-based ones that measure independently left and right. If that isn't a factor, then you're left with, here's the ones that I can, I can use. And then the final question you have to ask is, is this going to fit on my bike frame? And am I going to keep this bike frame for a pretty long time? Because there are a lot of people out there that get new bikes every two or three years. Well, if you get a new bike frame in two or three years and it has some kind of crazy odd duck bottom bracket size that's not going to fit your power meter that you just bought two years ago, you're going to be really bummed because now you're going to have to buy a new power meter on top of that bike as well. So those are the things that you really have to keep in mind when you're looking for a power meter. It's really critical to, to keep those decisions in mind and, and then you can get to the one that makes the most sense for you. Because again, each of these have pros and cons, strengths and weaknesses, um, budget is a factor, all those things are important. So I hope that helps you in making the decision for which is the best power meter for me because they are incredible tools and I know that you'll make you even faster. I'm Hunter Allen with Peaks Coaching Group. Like us on Facebook. We have incredible tips all the time on Facebook. Share lots of fun things in the cycling world. Peaks Coaching Group on Facebook. Thanks a lot.